it's uh, even Amanda here from the professional beauty team with our weekly live a little bit later than planned but glad you could all join us and um, we have a very special guest with us today um Susan Routledge I don't know if you want to tell us a little bit about um, yourself I'm Susan Routledge <laughs> and um, I feel like I'm part of the team because yeah. I've been around that much or like that long um uh, I'm a business consultant, salon owner of 30 years, and also have like, online programs. And um, I'm going to be speaking in Manchester about putting prices up, and that's mm, what we're going to yeah. be talking about now. Yeah, so that's our topic for today is how to put your prices up without losing clients. Um, Susan's an absolute pro on this, so that's why we've got her in. Um, Susan, where should salons start if they are thinking about putting their prices up? I think you need to get rid of the fee factor. Um, because, that, and that's what I see with most salon owners, and I've done it myself. You know, you like think, oh my word, but my <laughs> price is up, clients are going to run for the hills. But, you, you know, clients are coming to you because they see value in what you offer now. Mm. A small price increase shouldn't really have that greater impact on them. You know, you've got the supermarket prices are changing all the time. It, you know, it, in, in general, you know, we've got like suppliers who are, are putting prices up quite significantly mm. in some cases. Wages are going up. So in some ways to not put your prices up is, you know, it's detrimental because clients expect to see the same members of your team there. And to do that, you've got to be able to be generating enough money to be able to upskill them, keep them mm, yeah. sort of, you know, at, at a level that, you know it's great for the business plus as well you've got to have the cash to be able to invest in in equipment yeah. and things so yeah, sure. you know, it's, it's something that uh, I think clients understand that that's just part it, it is it's part of business okay mm. yeah so just having the the kind of confidence to do it and do it at the right time yeah are there any mistakes that salons make when putting their prices up in terms of when they do it or, or how often there isn't a particular time when it should be you know, frequently, not frequently, but you know, at least once a year, mm -hmm. you should be reviewing your prices. Um, I think the biggest mistake I see is that people go into overwhelm of looking at what everybody else is charging, right? Yeah. Um, and and then go into the fear factor from that. But you know, clients, I have just said, you know, they're seeing value in what you do. I'm a, I'm a big, huge fan of like signature treatments mm -hmm. because if you can turn any of your treatments into signature treatments which are just something that you've tweaked and per perfected yourself that someone can't get that down the road mm -hmm. you know so then you, you you're making yourself a little bit price irrelevant from from what everyone else is doing um you know it, and i think it's just really you've just got to accept that it, it is part of um the business one of the thing i, I I've seen in the last year or so is that um, um, salon owners are a little bit wary of that team like saying oh you know if we put prices up we're not going to get any tips and yeah, things okay. and that yeah, right. I think the tip thing is just it how people buy now is changing so in mm. general uh, from all the salons I work with I see that like you know people aren't like salon um, therapists aren't getting the tips that they used to so I, I don't think price mm. increase changes that yeah. either so uh, you know I think it's just something you have to structure into your business mm. and think right you know August is the time when we change our prices and uh, there's so many different ways to do it and that mm. I'm going to be like talking through five different ways mm. at, in the seminar so in essence because what works best for one business doesn't necessarily yeah. work for another yeah. Um, so, you know, in essence, someone coming to the seminar can have like a five-year plan, really. They can mm. do one, one year, one another, because I think changing it up a little bit, how you're doing it, um, rather than just across the board, like putting yeah. all your prices up, okay. um, can be a little mm. bit scary. So yeah, there's lots sense. of ways to do yeah. it. And how do you think salons should explain to their clients that they have put the pricing up? Because obviously I guess a lot of people are a bit nervous about doing it and a bit nervous about telling their clients. Mm. You know, what should they say to explain why they've done it, you know? I think, you know, you have to do it with confidence. Um, I think where people get into problems is they practically apologise mm, to clients yeah. that they, they're having to do this. And then clients react in a different way. I yeah. think, you know, if it, 
clients can see that you're investing in the business and you know and um and and, and see all the great things you're doing and you focus more on that i think if you know when someone puts a whole focus and they've got signs all over saying we're increasing our prices it shouldn't be the main focus when a client comes in it mm, should be yeah. still on the treatment still on the service mm. and that is you but know, it's just part a of it. yeah part. yeah what about um sounds that might be in a less affluent area and say well you know yeah. my clients are, are really price sensitive and if i put my prices up they're going to go elsewhere because that's you know that's their focus is that is the advice to those people different than you know other times not necessarily because there's so many different business models every business is different um you know and depending on the treatments that you do in um again uh, signature treatments you can do from you know like a it doesn't matter what level that business is uh things that differentiate you from all of your competition, make you stand out in the sea of all the salons, really makes you a little bit less price yeah, irrelevant, sure, yeah. you know, relevant kind mm. of. Um, so it, it, it doesn't really matter at what level you, or, you know, how big, small your business is. You really, really need to like work out though how much of the treatments are costing you, how much everything's mm. costing you, because what the overheads that your business has can be totally different to the salon down the road. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you, just to look at what everyone else is charging doesn't, you know, work. Yeah. You know, so it's... Um, it's not a business model, but you yeah, can sustain yeah. it. And, necessarily. you know, if your overheads are slightly higher, then maybe you just need to look at, like, some bringing in some new treatments which have a slightly higher price point, generally wherever mm-hmm. someone had them and, and that can yeah. like level that out there's there's so many different things you can you can do um but really you need to get your bottom line figures right mm-hmm. yeah rather just, than just yeah, looking at yeah, what everybody else with. is yeah. charging <laughs> um yeah i think that's all my questions yeah, well we were going to ask a little bit about one thing that we get asked a bit uh, yeah. is um planning pricing around the VAT threshold. So if you are um, not making enough income to be, pay- to be paying VAT in your business, but you're kind of on the cusp of doing that, how should you plan, I suppose, for um, a price increase that is going to reflect your outgoings with, with having to pay VAT? Right. If you're on the cusp already, then you are, and you haven't planned for it, then yes, yeah, planning ahead would yeah, be. <laughs> then, you, you know, there's little way that you can absorb that you know, everyone says oh i'm going to have 20 percent more to pay out you know with incomings and outcoming goings it normally around about 13 percent difference it's going to make right. to your business um but if you just start your business now i would say you know make sure that your prices reflect the fact that you are going to grow to that size mm. use that money while you're growing your business to um invest in equipment and things like that mm. because then when it comes to the point where you are at the VAT limit mm. it just means that it's not such a blow mm. you know it's, yeah. it's, it's that big job yeah, that's the problem the, the mistake yeah. a, a lot of um, salon owners make is like thinking right well you know I'm not paying VAT now I don't mm. need to like factor that in but I think the earlier you factor it in and just look at it as a bit of a bonus mm. that way you can put it even into a you know another account and, and grow it um, mm. while because you, you can't really justify saying to a client right well you know like our prices mm. have gone up 13% yeah, yeah. so again there's ways to do it yeah. both factoring it in yeah. from early on uh, and what I do as well I see a lot of salons who then try and sit on the cusp and, yes, and that's yeah, it's and then, the yeah and then it stops any further growth, yeah, yeah. So it's which is not not an ultimate business yeah. plan, is it? So, so yeah, yeah, I think you yeah, just got to bite the bullet and think, right? <laughs> you know, we're going to have to go over this limit and then grow from mm. there. Um, but as I say, every business is different, and yeah. there's so many different. And just planning ahead sounds yeah. like key. <laughs> well, well, I think yeah. um, that's probably we've got time for. But yeah. thanks so much, Susan. That's really, really useful advice. I think really mm. interesting. Yeah, yeah and Susan cool. will be at Professional Beauty North talking about this exact subject and much giving more you detail. all the tools <laughs> and the tips that you need. To plan and do it correctly so um, make sure you head to the PV website register for the show and you'll see Susan there but otherwise we'll see you next week yeah.